Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday morning webinar slash trading room. My name is Eric Stemft. I'm going to be your host for this morning to show you the DTS system. All right, uh, for those of you new to the trading room this morning, welcome. What you're looking at here is the diversified trading system, and it's diversified because we look at the market from three different points of view. Here across the top, we have the Hawk Micro Scalper. Through the middle, we have the Falcon Swing Trader. And across the bottom, we have the Eagle Trend Trader. Regardless of the tool, the signal generation all works the same way. Uh, chiefly, what we're going to be looking for, and let me find you a clearer example. The market really, really choppy right there. Here, let's go back here. What we're looking for is confluence. We're looking for things to be in sync. Signal generation always starts with a warning dot and an audio alert. Once the signal parameters are met, we're going to get a triangle and a hash mark that gives tells us the signal parameters have all been met. It's time to make a decision. Now, not all signals are created equal. Here on the Hawk Microscalper, for instance, we ignore signals that come off of yellow bars. And you can see why. The yellow bars, you don't always get a lot of follow through. The yellow bar, by definition, is a neutral bar. It's neither bullish nor bearish. But when you get something like this occurring, this is what we refer to as a first micro-macro cross signal. It's the first signal where everything is in sync after the micro line and the macro lines cross. So we have green trend lines, a green filter, a green signal and of course green bars that's a high probability signal for us and you can see we had a reasonable amount of follow through there uh, certainly enough to reach our scalp target oh and if we go back to the current trading right now we're actually getting another first micro macro cross printing at the same time but it's only a couple minutes into the open I don't usually like trading right out of the open. The exception sometimes is here on the Eagle Trend Trader. That first in sync signal tends to have some pretty good follow through. <laughs> Yesterday it had amazing follow through. With the Eagle, what we're looking at here is we're looking at our trading band. Now I know some of you are going to think that's an Ichimoku cloud. It's not. But in some ways, it, it reacts similar to an Ichimoku cloud in that when the market gets into the cloud and especially into this hard edge, we expect the market to give us some sort of reaction. This was, where was yesterday's opening signal? Right here. And you can just see a just crazy rally out of the open. And then after that, we kind of petered out a little bit, got a couple secondary signals, and now things have turned over and become a little choppier. You can see our band not really following through. We're, we've gone from bearish in the overnight to slightly bullish in the morning. But we don't have an in sync signal there just yet, so we'll leave them alone. Here on the Falcon Swing Trader, and again, allow me to back this up so I can make it look a little clearer for you before we get into today's trading. We pay particular attention to the trend line. So when the trend line is red, we're looking for sell signals. When the trend line is green, we're looking for buy signals. Here too, we're looking for continuity. We're looking for things to be in sync. 
So we have, this would be our trend change signal right here. So the trend line changes color. It's essentially the first signal where everything starts to come in sync. So we've got the green warning dot, the green triangle on hash mark to tell us the signal parameters are complete, green bars, green trend line, green filter. That's one of our high probability signals. Each tool has got about three or four high probability signals that we focus on in our trading. So it's not like we're chasing every single signal if you're looking at this and saying, whoa, there's a lot of signals there. No, it's not necessarily the case. Uh, for instance, this signal right here would be another one of our high probability signals on the Falcon. This is what we call a, a late filter entry signal. What happens is the filter down below goes out of sync, comes back into sync. The trend line itself never changes color and we produce a signal. So that's another one of our high probability signals. And you can see it too had very good follow through. Now this is a exceptional follow through. I'm not gonna tell you this happens every day because it sure doesn't. But about once every quarter, once every couple of months, we'll see the market make an extreme move like this. And uh, yeah, it was pretty extreme. These horizontal lines that you see printing on here, this is what we call a system add-on. I'm gonna show you a few of those this morning as well. The system add-on means that it's simply that it's a standalone type indicator. You don't need to use it. It's just for DTS, it's not exclusive to DTS. You can put it on your five minute chart, you can put it on your 233 tick chart, you can put it on your volume chart, and whatever you're trading, really, you can put it on there. Uh, the support and resistance lines, these are not floor pivots. This is a an estimation of 21 support and resistance zones for today's trading, or in this case, yesterday's trading. And you can see that they did, well, with the exception of the market just trampling over these, it did not a, a bad job of containing the market activity, giving you an idea where the market may find resistance, where, where it's showing support. And like I say, you've got an assortment of 21 of these support and resistance lines. Now, the gold line is your median line. That's in the middle, just above this primary resistance, just below is primary support. And then you can see you get into the secondary support and resistance zones. Um, just as a matter of interest, look at this. The NASDAQ yesterday almost blew through all 21 lines. There's 10 lines above, 10 lines below. That's how volatile the NASDAQ was yesterday. I've only seen it um, trade outside of the support and resistance lines twice. No, sorry, three times. Twice on the NASDAQ, once on crude oil. Those were very, very volatile days to say the least. <clears throat> or very strong rally days, let's put it that way. Today, the volatility is likely to be next to nothing. It's likely to be a dull market because there are some serious FOMC minutes due out this afternoon. And that's going to weigh heavy on the market. But we are in the demo room here, so I will demo uh, so you can see how the software works. Uh, we are producing a trend change signal. Oops. We were producing a trend change signal here on the Falcon, which was I was about to attempt to sell for you, but our signal has since been absorbed by that green bar. So we'll put that away. The markets I'm following here are the NASDAQ. I'm also watching crude oil and the E-mini. So if something interesting happens there, I will bring those over for you. Oh, actually, speak of the devil. We've got a possible 
buy signal brewing here in the NASDAQ, or the NASDAQ, in crude oil. So we've got, you can see the warning dot gives you plenty of warning. The warning dot and audio alert lets you know beforehand that a signal is starting to build. This is our trend change signal. So the trend line has changed color. We get this little characteristic up, down, up pattern. So what it shows you is the buyers are getting stronger, at least strong enough to change the trend line color. The sellers try to fight the market back, and then perhaps the buyers are going to come through here and complete a buy signal. That's what makes that a trend change signal. And if they do that, let's see, I'm just going to forecast, can I cover it down there? No, I can't. Oh, got it. This tool I'm using is the trade manager, and what the trade manager does, it protects me, essentially. Oh, okay, I'm going to have to set this up a little bit tighter. There we go. So what the trade manager does is uh, currently I'm set on risk percent mode. That means that all my trades will be capped at 2% risk. That means it doesn't matter if I place my stop you know, right here in the middle of the current trading or if I place it, well, right here below the swing. I can't afford the swing down here, not at 2%. But my risk will always be capped at 2% of my capital. So if I'm trading a $20,000 account, that means my maximum risk exposure per trade will be limited to $400. And of course, if I'm trading a $10,000 account, my max risk will be capped at 200. Now you can adjust it, of course, you can set whatever value you like. Generally speaking, risking 5% or less of your capital is considered prudent and 2% most money managers agree is ideal. Now there is a manual mode as well if you would like to, you know, you're trading whatever, three contracts, ten contracts, whatever, you can always change it to manual mode, it will default to this quantity up here. And crude's going to give me a second chance here. I'm going to use a stop limit order on crude just because sometimes when crude is funky like this, I don't want to get slipped. So I can use my stop limit. I've set a one tick limit on the slippage. And crude very, very quiet here as well. Hey, good morning, Christian. Christian's here. Um, he's one of our DTS owners. And uh, for those of you who are Forex traders, Christian trades the Forex with the DTS system. You're going to have some interesting days ahead of you. My goodness, with the things going on in Europe, the currencies are going to be all over the map, I think. <laughs> okay, our... Crude signal fading now. All right, so it's disappeared. We'll clear that and we'll look for another opportunity. You can see the market held down here at the moment by the median line. What I was hoping is uh, the signal was going to print somewhere here around the median line. I was going to buy above the median line and try to cover here below the primary support. That's why I had my trade set up this way. But we're fading away from that, so I'll put this back on the shelf for now, and we'll come back to that later. Because in about 45 minutes' time, we'll have the crude inventory report. All right, still trying to get a handle on which way the market is trying to lean today. I have a feeling it's just going to drift a little bit here. 
just kind of waffle back and forth. All right. It's not one of our strongest signals. This is what we call a red bar buy signal. We can short the failure of a red bar buy. This is essentially the counter trend signal here on the on the hawk. And what I'm going to do is I can see I can afford two contracts. So I'm going to split that up and I'm going to leave a runner in play. So what I'm doing is I'm going to cover above the high. <laughs> I'm going to cover above the swing high, uh, all right, and they're running away from me, but oh, I'll leave it alone for now. Uh, I was going to show you what would happen if I placed my stop a little bit closer. My risk would still be the same amount. What would change, however, is the quantity traded. All right, let's try that then. So if I choose to put my stop like so many of you want to put your stop so tight, look, the risk amount doesn't change. The risk amount stays the same. So if your risk amount is going to stay the same, why would you strangle your trade? That's my way of thinking. Why would you not allow the trade a chance to reach the profit target? And somebody's going to be busy typing here, yeah, but you've got a lopsided risk-reward ratio. Yeah, risk-reward ratios don't work. I'll show you how, risk, how the pros do risk-reward ratios here in a minute. The way risk-reward ratios are good, and, but they are perhaps the most misunderstood aspect of trading management ever and people misuse them and they end up ruining their accounts and they're left scratching their heads and they don't know what went wrong it's because the internet is full of bad advice and people don't know better and a lot of people out there are spewing the same stuff without actually using it and, I don't know, they say to make themselves sound smart, I suppose. Or, rather than not sound smart, maybe not everybody is that egotistical, but at least they don't want to sound stupid. Well, not a first micro macro cross yet. We've still got the macro out of sync, but I can enter this trade on the failure of the red bar buy signal. Again, it's a little bit more aggressive. It's not a quality trade. If you're looking for a signal to uh, mirror me on, I would probably wait for that first micro macro cross signal. It should develop in more or less the same neighborhood. What I suspect we're going to see today is a relatively tight trading range. Let me get that YM Russell. Russell saying we got a rule of three signal on the eagle with the YM, so I'll just load that chart and bring it over for everyone to see the YM of course the mini Dow another one of the stock indices okay now we're getting a first micro macro cross so we're getting the warning dots this is one of our high probability signals oh shoot now it's into yellow bars yeah all right let's put that on the shelf and let's take a look at what Russell's seeing here good man Russell we're getting a rule of three signal in the mini Dow. All right, so the rule of three with the eagle means that we've got, it's our, our counter trend signal. And let me set this up and then I'll explain. For the sake of the trading room, I'm going to take it early and then I'll explain what I would do with this if, if we were looking at this trade um, in tomorrow's trading room. But, like I said, we're in a demo room. I, I'm going to demo something here. <laughs> so we've got a bullish band. If you're, first off, 
if you're looking at a counter trend signal first you have to have a trend right you can't have a counter trend signal without a trend the, so that's ingredient number one. Ingredient number two is that somewhere through here we have to have a retest of the highs and a failure to confirm that the buyers in fact are out of the picture. When that happens we've got signals producing against the bullish band. So we've got one, two, we're about to produce signal number three. That's what makes this a rule of three. We get three counter trend signals. Now, the tough part with this one, Russell, is I'd have to say, I'm not sure yet that this little itty bitty uptick is going to be our test, our retest of the high. But that's not to say the rule of three isn't going to work because this right here may actually turn out to be our retest. Now, normally, when we're talking about retests or tests of the extreme, as I like to refer to them, this second push comes up short. Right? There's the extreme, and the second rally comes up short. Occasionally, however, it will rally through and then die. It's almost like this is the final push. So it could be a rule of three. You're definitely correct on that, Russell. I'm not much in a shorting mood because the market has been so strong yesterday, but I would agree with you that we've got a potential sell signal. Okay, so now the signal is complete. We've got our uh, triangle and hash mark printing. We are currently against the ATR. That's a squiggly red and blue line. So what, if you're looking to do this trade for real, I would suggest that you're probably better off waiting for the ATR to flip over or to short from below these lows. I know you're going to end up giving up uh, at least 8 or 10 ticks just to gain entry. But... Sometimes it's, you're better off waiting to find yourself on the right side of a position. But we'll see here if they, if they bring me in, then at least I'll be able to show you how the trade manager works. Now the trade manager is this fancy tool here that I'm using on the right hand side. This is a very important tool for your trading. And I'm not just saying that this tool probably more than any other can have a direct impact on your success or failure as a trader. Jim, uh, thanks for pointing out the crude oil signal. I will check that out for you in just a second. Uh, the, uh, I've already shown you the risk component down here. You can preset as many as three targets. You can preset as many as three profit targets or profit objectives. I haven't had a chance to show you yet the the trade manager or the what we call the profit manager component of trade manager. And that is the 16 different stop strategies that are built in and they are all customizable. So you can change the parameters if you want to make it more conservative or perhaps more aggressive. so you can change all those things. What will happen is once this is enabled and you have an active trade, the trade manager will automatically take your stops and manage them according to your stop strategy. Now currently, oh, the swing strategy is up there. I was going to say currently I've got my stops up there so I don't want it to begin rolling my stops just yet.
crude oil also more likely to rally than than not all right there we go okay so we got filled see that's the way to make the market go down is to say it needs to rally <laughs> oh well okay so now we have an active trade um, of course crude inventory out in about a half an hour so we're probably not going to see this market drift too far Uh, sure, yeah, let's go to the swing strategy. Hmm, or not. If we actually got a little momentum here on the trade, I would go to something more aggressive like the parabolics or maybe the bar high low, and you could see the stops roll bar for bar or according to whatever the strategy is all right we're gonna leave that alone for the moment if we get a little bit of movement on that we'll come back to that all right let's take a look here at crude oil Ah, I see what you mean, Jim. Jim says, I just missed a great move on crude oil. So we have uh, a band that has turned bearish. We've got our trend change signal right here, a little bit of follow through. This is probably the signal Jim was referring to. Not to worry, Jim, it's, uh, if they're going to head lower, we should end up into the hard edge here somewhere eventually and we should see a bounce. You see, with the eagle, once a trend establishes, we look for the market to get into the hard edge and then for the hard edge to bounce it out. That makes for a very reliable signal for us. Crude, of course, has been a little bit lackluster of late. Then here's another one. That would be close enough to be a hard edge bounce. Here's a couple better examples, but you need a little bit of a trend, right? If you don't have a trend, it's hard to get a continuation signal. All right. Let's go back to all the action on the NASDAQ. Oh, <laughs> when I was showing you the YM, I confused it with crude oil. Sorry about that. I put the YM chart where I normally keep my crude oil chart. All right, so the NASDAQ trying to get a little bit more bullish again. The, N, uh, the YM trying to get a little bit more bearish. This now, our first micro macro cross higher. Again, I wouldn't normally take conflicting signals like this, but for the sake of the trading room, I'm going to try to show you. So first micro macro cross, we've got the warning dot. I know if the signal completes, it's going to print right here. And if that does not get into yellow bars, there we go. So what I've done, again, I've split my profit objective. I'm taking 50% to target one. 50% is going to be a runner. My first target here at 10 ticks that's my scalping target
Tony's asking, are you paying attention to the 2000 target here on the YM? I think what Tony's referring to is 20,000. And yes, definitely. Definitely. In the NASDAQ, which is kind of my favorite at the moment, um, 5,000. 5,000 seems like a very realistic target for the for the NASDAQ. Okay, here on uh, the NASDAQ, however, you can see we've drifted into yellow bars, back into red bars, so that's a non-signal. But before we leave that, I want to show you here. Okay, the YM actually getting a little bit of follow-through now. And I will, let's see where parabolics are going to put me. Ah, uh, sure, let's go with parabolics, why not? So I'm going to accept the parabolic strategy. And did you see what happened there? My stop, trade manager grabbed my stop from up there and brought it down here to where the parabolic strategy is. So now it will roll my stops according to the parabolic strategy. Pretty cool, huh? I can change these, of course. I can change them during the trade as you see if I want it to be more or less aggressive I can flip to a different stop strategy let's say I wanted to see what the chandelier strategy is like I can turn on the previews and these orange hash marks will tell me where the chandelier strategy is if that looks good to me I just click accept and then I'll be running the chandelier strategy Oh, we'll go with parabolics at the moment. Trade Forecaster, this is another one of these add-on tools that you can use on any chart, not just the DTS chart, says that we are in scalp mode for about another five minutes, and then we're going to move into trend mode. That's interesting. Scalp mode, yeah, definitely. You can see here on our Hawk Micro Scalper, all these yellow bar clusters, that's an indication that we are in a sideways market. And that prices are going to be a little non-committal. All right, we'll put the YM back on the shelf for now. And we drifted into yellow bars now we're into red bars i can cancel that buy signal here on the ym or YM, nasdaq hawk and we're back to blasville All the stock indices kind of in sync today. Everybody kind of giving us the same sort of look. The NASDAQ appears to be the strongest of the bunch, but that does look to be temporary. We're back into the hard edge here on the Eagle. As I mentioned earlier, this FOMC meeting that's due out this afternoon, that's just going to have a real effect on the market today, thing going to stymie the market, I think. We're working on a possible red bar buy. We only have the warning dot. I haven't activated the signal yet. This is just sitting there. It's not pending. I need to see the signal complete. I need to see the triangle and the hash mark, just like this one. If I'm going to try to short it, Come on, give it to me, you stinkers. Uh, we've got
got a very, well, I was going to say a possible green bar cell, but that's, that's kind of reaching a bit. The hawk, of course, being the scalping tool, is likely to be one of the tools that gives us our signal earliest, if it gives us our signal. Ay, ay, ay. Not a good day to do a demonstration. <laughs> All right, well, we'll throw it on the shelf. says he's been short the YM since 950. I know, it's been a ride. Here is the YM. It's making a little bit of traction. You can see we rolled one of our stops over. I think I'll leave the break even in play. The break even looks like it's going to occur down here near the lows. This last swing low. So I'll leave my auto break even in play. Shoot, the way the market is today, I may as well leave my profit order in play today also. Sometimes I try to run that first signal out just in case it's a bigger move, but I don't think today is the day to be that ambitious. This is the kind of day where you got to load up on those monster drinks just to stay awake. I still don't have our signal. I'm also running the dynamic equivolume bars here from Indicator Warehouse, and you can tell uh, the width of the bars, how much volume is coming through each particular bar. For those of you unfamiliar with equivolume charting, it, uh, it reflects the volume on each bar. So thin bars have less volume Thick bars have more volume. What a lot of people don't realize is that when the market is moving, here, let's go back here a little bit. When the when the market is really moving, I'll get back here to yesterday. It'll be a better example. Sorry if I'm making you dizzy. There we go. If the market is really moving, it usually does it on relatively thin volume. You'll notice here some of the bars got thick. This is where the sellers were trying to come in to knock the market down. When the market does finally turn, it always does it on fatter bars. So when you see a bunch of fat bars begin to print, like we have right here, there is a chance we're going to see a little bit of an uptick from here. And if we don't, well, that just means that the sellers ran over the buyers. Still no signal. <laughs> Let's go back. 
back to the action here on the YM. What are we up about? Yeah, I was going to say about 50 bucks. Okay. <laughs> Well, we can't make the market do anything, unfortunately. Uh, Todd's asking, is that a rule three setting up on the Eagle on the NASDAQ? Well, not really, Todd. It's... I don't doubt that the NASDAQ may head a little bit lower from here, but it's not a rule of three per se, or I wouldn't say it's a rule of three, because remember, anytime you have a counter trend signal, so what Todd's looking at is he's saying, hey, we got one, two, three counter trend signals. Should we be looking to go short here? Well. I guess it depends. Would you consider this to be a trend? Like that's not, you know, that certainly doesn't compare to this. Now, to quote Crocodile Dundee or to misquote him, now that's a trend. Right? This, not so much. So, again, I'm not saying the NASDAQ can't go lower from here, but uh, rule of three, I don't know. I think that's a little bit of a reach. So we've got, uh, but let's say for argument's sake, you say, yeah, okay, that that is enough of a trend for me. I'm going to consider shorting. Uh, you certainly do have several retests here. You've got one, two, or pardon me, two, three retests right here. If the market fails and heads lower, below these lows, then yeah, definitely. I would say you've got a shorting opportunity. I don't think I would take it right on the triangle and the hash mark, however. I think that might be getting in a little early. Uh, we are still against the ATR, so when the market's kind of funky like this, I think it behooves you there's a word we don't use very often anymore to throw a couple trend lines on here and at the very least enter below the trend line maybe even below one of these swing lows certainly below the ATR I would say I think it's important too, as a trader, not to get too anxious about getting into a trade. One of my favorite trading quotes is, uh, you know, I'd rather be out of a position wishing I was in than in a position wishing I was out. And that is so true. So let's see if we got, the reason we've got three tools here is that one of our tools should produce a signal for us. So. I'm going to clear that. Yeah, there we go. So we didn't get such a clear signal on the Eagle, but we do have a trend change signal here on the Falcon. And it looks like we have an opportunity for a second push on the entry. So all that means with the second push is we allow the signal to engage, and then we really just let the market flinch. Once we see where the current level of the sellers are, or the buyers are in this case, then we can look to buy or sell uh, above or below those levels. I think we're going to get all that volatility in the overnight and tomorrow.
what I was going to mention as well is while we were on the subject of getting in too early on a trade that you don't want to just get in for the sake of getting in everybody is always afraid of missing these moves right that's a monster move that could that could wait make your week or even your month depending how heavily you traded it but even if you miss that move and believe me I've missed plenty uh, it's not going to be the last move you miss but when you miss a move like that that doesn't mean you are out of opportunities yes you miss that opportunity but the chances are very very strong that this market is going to remain in an uptrend right at the very least we need to see a retest of the high so here we are producing a buy signal Oops, that's a little bit too deep of a stop. There's a buy signal. Uh, you place a decent stop on the trade because, of course, at this point, you don't know how big of a retracement you're going to get. If you're somebody who likes to trade Fibonacci retracements, you could say, you know, I, I need to cover at least to my 50% level. I think that makes sense. Uh, ideally, even covering down here below the 62, it's a, entirely possible you could see a retracement that deep. But whatever the case, you want to give yourself a decent stop. You want to control your risk, very important. And, you know, the, give, the market will give you whatever it has left. Now, at least when you miss a move like this, like I said, you know, or you have a pretty good idea which way the market's going to go but that doesn't mean that you're not going to be short on opportunities it's not like the market only gives you one chance and if you blow it that's it you're out but when you're looking at a market like this what we have this morning well things are a lot more convoluted And if you had shorted right here, well, okay, it may work out. That's why we, you know, use the risk manager to contain our risk to an acceptable amount. So if the trade does not work out, well, we haven't we haven't blown up our account. This actually works out to be just a little more than one percent of my capital. And you're not going to blow up your account if you're only risking one percent of your trading capital. That's not, not going to be an issue. You are going to blow up your account when you are trading 8% or 10% of your capital. That's when you're going to get yourself into trouble. Okay, the YM trade is still holding strong. Uh, we are producing another signal here on the on the NQ so we've got the warning dot we're going to get another warning dot or trying to uh, the hash marks going to print right down here I guess I could uh, could have left that trade as is I'll enter below the low now with the Falcon sometimes I'm taking a bit of a chance here because sometimes we get two warning dots and then hopefully I'll get the bar with the triangle hash mark I'm kind of assuming here that once this bar finishes on the low it will complete the signal Christian's asking here on the NASDAQ on the Hawk. All right, Christian's asking 
<clears throat> Eric, do you trade the hash signal on the hawk when it occurs over a second yellow bar before it changes into green, like I see in your NQ hawk chart? Okay, so I think what Christian might be referring to is a signal like this. So we've got the, essentially, here, let's look at this real time, or pretend real time. So we've got essentially a first micro-macro cross building, right? We've got the warning dot, and then we come back, but the next bar is a yellow bar, but with a complete signal. Christian is asking, do you take that signal? No, I do not. The yellow bars, even though occasionally they'll work out, like this one did here, uh, for every yellow bar signal that works out, I can probably find you two that don't work out. So by their nature, they're just a little bit too neutral, so I do tend to avoid them. And this one, I think, also ended up failing. Now, the exception to that combination is on the red bar buy or a green bar sell. Let's see if I can find you an example. Um, yeah, here we go. Okay, so this is a red bar, and it's going to produce a buy signal. I would consider this still to be a valid red bar buy signal because by its nature it's a signal that's going to occur late in the trend. So yellow bars, you know, showing fluctuation in the marketplace, buyers and sellers mixing it up a bit. So it's okay for a red bar buy signal, but not for a macro pullback, not for a first micro macro cross. It is okay for a four arrow consolidation. And I'm not gonna be able to show you a decent one here today because the market is just so sideways. But the four arrow consolidation signal is so strong that I will take it on a yellow bar. It is the only hawk signal I will take on a yellow bar. All right, so our falcon signal, you know, wandering still very sideways, very tight trading range today. The market's just going to flip-flop a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, Tony, you got the right idea. I think Tony says the range is so tight for me. I'm going to stick around for the oil report, then come back just before the two uh, before two p.m. and see if it, it, the market shakes up. Oh, it'll shake up. <laughs> it'll shake up in a big way. What we've got happening right now, and again with the hawk, it's the most evident because we're printing all these yellow bars at more or less the same price level. Traders refer to this sometimes as barbed wire, and you can see why. You know, it's like barbed wire. And just like barbed wire, when you play with barbed wire, you tend to get hurt, and the same will be true for trying to trade this mess. Hey, way to go, Steve. Steve says, I set some trend lines this morning on crude oil, maxed out a 15 tick profit. Way to go. Uh, crude inventory reports coming up here shortly, so let me, uh, let me set up a crude chart here. Uh, Christian's asking, thanks, have you thought about how to use a cloud in the Hawk as we use on the Eagle? No, 
Now, that's not to say you can't put the Eagle Cloud on the Hawk if you like. Uh, all these tools have been programmed independent of one another. What I mean by that is the programming on the Hawk is specific to the Hawk. It does not draw on any parameters from the Falcon or Eagle, and that's true for all the tools. That's why sometimes you'll get a buy signal in the Hawk and you won't have a trend signal on the Falcon or a swing signal on the Eagle. But I do know some traders, they really like the, the Eagle cloud and they'll move it over into one of the other tools. And the final criteria is always, does it help you make a decision? Right? If it helps you make a decision, then by all means, go ahead, use it. However, if it only clouds your decision making, then no, don't put it on. You don't need it. All right, we're going to play here with the crude inventory report. Ooh, the market in a little bit of a down, downward bias. But it is kind of settled here on the primary support. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the OCO tool. And I'm going to set a buy order above the median line. I'm going to sell, put a sell order below the secondary support line. And maybe we'll go with a tighter stop. Oh, I almost forgot. Let's cancel those. Now, notice with the OCO orders, these orders are linked. i got a couple minutes, so I better be fast. These orders are linked. So if I cancel one, the other cancels. If I toggle it again, I'm going to get a second set of orders. I'm going to limit my slippage here to three ticks on crude. So I'm going to do a buy stop limit, a sell stop limit. There we go. And we'll see whether or not they give me the fill or whether I'm going to get gapped I was talking to a fellow the other day who was trading crude oil and he was getting horrid fills horrible fills I said you'd better talk to your broker because he was getting slipped, going in and slipped, coming out of the trade. Uh, very unusual amounts and consistently so. Like we all get slipped. Notice I just got gapped. <clears throat> but that's okay. We'll cancel that and we'll try it again. Um, we all get gapped and slipped on a trade, but he was getting gapped crazy amounts. Okay, so we know the top end now, so we'll buy above there, and maybe we'll try to short below the median line. I meant to do this the last time we traded crude because <clears throat> crude does have a tendency to gap. Oops. Okay, what happened there? Let's try that again. I've got my stop enabled. There we go. I think what happened is I got filled and then my stop ran right down here. You see where these blue dots are? I should go with a more, uh, there we go, a more neutral stop to start. So I got filled and I stopped myself out immediately with the stop strategy because what happened is the trade manager will automatically give me a stop wherever the blue dots are at. And if the blue dot was right down here near where my entry was, I ended up stopping myself out.
Well, even the crude inventory report a little bit of a bust today. Yeah, I agree, Christian. Christian makes a very interesting comment here, and I found the same to be true. He says the good news is of DTS that most of the time when the news comes out, the DTS signals very often are on the right side of the signal, and that does tend to happen. This morning we didn't get a clear signal here in crude oil, but I am amazed at how many times we will go into the crude inventory report, DTS a few minutes before, you know, three, four, five minutes before will give us a buy or sell signal and the market will end up going in that direction. It's almost as though somebody tipped the software early. The software got an early tip which way the market was going to go and it does tend to follow through. I would agree. I've seen that happen several times. This morning though, pretty boring session for the most part. A lot of sideways trading. I suspect the market will continue sideways for the rest of the session or for most of the session. All the trading will be in the afternoon. I think that's a pretty safe, pretty safe guesstimation. Still nothing. signal on the NQ just yet and it's going to be a long time before we get a fill here. We do have a decent range now on crude oil so certainly if it trades above the high here at our support or pardon me our resistance line at 52.80 that's certainly a reasonable buy and a short below the median line and the current support at around the 52 20 area also a reasonable sell. So let's put that back on the shelf for now. All 
All right, boys and girls, uh, does anybody have any questions or any markets you'd like to see? I'm really sorry. There's not much I can do to make the market go anywhere today. They're really just content to move sideways, and they're probably going to stay stuck in this trading range for a while. I think we're going to see the market just kind of flounder back and forth, give us the odd breakout higher or lower, but I don't think we're going to see any follow through until this afternoon. I've pretty much shown you what I can. Uh, we'll stay with them for a few minutes. And then we're going to close up shop. All right, Michael is asking, why are there green bars when price is going down? All right, good question. Excellent question. The different programs will paint the bar colors differently depending on the parameters set for that particular tool. So here on the Hawk, for instance, you're absolutely correct. Prices are heading lower, but the bars are still green. What that tells us is that while the bars are still green anyways, the, there is still a bullish component in the market. The sellers have not taken total control of the market just yet. Here on the Eagle, it's a little bit different the way the bars paint. The hollow bars, whether they be green or red, are like a traditional rally bar. So we have our open and we have our higher close. The solid bars, whether they be green or red, means that the market closed below the open, so it's a more bearish bar. Just like with regular candlesticks, the bars that have no wicks associated to, with them are considered stronger than bars that have wicks or tails. The wicks or tails obviously show a little bit of um, uh, non-commitment on the part of the buyers or sellers or a lack of commitment. So here on the Eagle, uh, we can have solid body green bars, but price is heading lower. And what that shows us is that the buyers are still in control, even though the market is heading a little bit lower. And likewise, we can have hollow body red bars saying that, okay, prices may be advancing, but sellers are still in control or at least for the time being. And then here on the Hawk, of course, it's similar, where the buyers remain in control even though prices will be heading lower. Today, not the best example, though, because of all this sideways trading. Whenever you get a lot of yellow bar clusters printing on more or less the same price level, that tells you you are in a sideways market. People are always asking, what's the best way to trade a sideways market? Well, there's only two ways really to trade a sideways market. Method number one, this is a favorite for the aggressive trader out there. Try to sell the top end of the trading range, try to buy the bottom end of the trading range. Okay, that's method number one. Method number two is you need to allow the market to get outside of the trading range, either higher or lower. Once it gets outside, it will retest the breakout to see whether or not the breakout will hold. If the breakout holds, the market will produce another buy signal or sell signal, as the case may be. Those are really the only two ways to trade 
a sideways market. If you think the range is big enough, you, you can try to buy the bottom, sell the top. Otherwise, you just sit on your hands until it gets outside of that trading range. That's all you can do. Remember, your job description as a trader is to take what the market is giving. If the market is not giving, well, then you're not taking. And it's as simple as that. You're going to run into trouble when you try to take when the market's not in the giving mood. Okay, if there's any other questions, please type away. Otherwise, I think we're going to close up shop here this morning a few minutes early. Um, as Anthony observed, I don't think we're going to miss out on anything, at least not until the afternoon. That's when things are going to get crazy. All right, no more questions. All right, we're going to close up shop. Thank you for your attendance today. I do wish there was more I could have shown you. If you have any questions afterwards, please feel free to email me or Adam. We will have another open house next week. The market should be a little bit more active next week. And, of course, DTS owners, I will see you in the trading room tomorrow morning, and I think we can anticipate a more active session than what we've seen today. It actually doesn't get much quieter than it is right now. All right, folks, have yourselves a wonderful day. If you're going to be trading this afternoon, be careful. The market is a powder keg. We'll talk to you later. Bye for now.